Hey guys, Four Sixty Style here. Um, today I'm talking about um, something that I did to my rifle. Um, it's hard to explain. Let me adjust this real quick. Sorry, guys. Um, it was by accident. Um, I hope you guys can kind of. Uh, a lot of viewers can kind of see this video. Um, after I went shooting on that windy day, remember I, I, uh, I was talking to him, uh, not talking, but I showed I made a video uh, the other day on uh, when I was shooting all those clay targets and stuff, and I says I shot the other day uh, on that windy day in that same area. Um, I brought my 303 British that day um, in that gr in that pit, that gravel pit. Um, is because I was alone that day, and uh, so I didn't have anywhere to put like my rifle because I brought my 303 British and I tried on my 357 that day and uh, the Bond arm and stuff, and it was windy that day, so uh, I had to lay the, the gun down not quite on the ground but on my bag the bag that had all my uh, my ammo in my ammo bag basically. So it was very, very windy. It was like 40 mile an hour gust winds that day. But I figured I'd go to the quiet part of the pit because I'm really down into the ground. And it still didn't work. A lot of sand went into my rifle, my 303 British. So I was able to shoot three rounds and I, didn't, I couldn't shoot more than that. Um, I couldn't get my phone to work right that day. And my stand wouldn't stay up. That's how windy it was. And um, so when I was cleaning my gun, after all that, I still shot some rounds and came home. So when I shot my gun, oh, not shot, but clean, sorry. <laughs> so when I clean my gun, I use this break free powder blast on my rifle. So nowheres on any of. Uh, I mean, any of the warning labels or anything to spray on uh, wood stocks. Um, so it just says, basically, gun blast, powder, cleans it quickly, follow the instructions, uh, don't breathe in because it's a chemical, like, you know, we all, all the warning signs, right? But it doesn't say don't spray on wood guns that have varnish on it so so what happened was this is kind of like of a brake clean so anybody who uses brake clean or like starter fluid um has an alcohol base on it <laughs> so it's basically made to clean and the whole thing it work it works great on polymer guns my uh, stainless gun my 460 bond arm works great but um, come to find out, I was cleaning my 303 British and the varnish was coming off my gun. Um, I don't know if it was because it's an aftermar aftermarket varnish um, versus like a new gun. No, because everything's like heat treated. Uh, so... <laughs> Come to find out, the varnish was peeling off my gun, off my 303. And I made a video before where uh, it's kind of a beater gun. And I've expressed that because I don't really care of how it looks. But um, I'm into like, the whole story is because I like vintage guns, the way they look, the way they came. I don't like people messing around with it. Um, I like rat rods. I built rat rods because um, I like the way it, it, the way you buy. It. I like the the patina on the way it came, the original. And to me, that feels better than restoring. Um, if you have a '69 Camaro, yes, I'm gonna restore that right shiny, that shiny diamond. You know what I mean? But as far as something that's vintage, that's not as glamorous as like a 303 British it's not like a uh, no like a Springfield or, or, or three Springfield so 
this is what came out of it. And I really like the way it came out. <laughs> so what I did, I just continued the damage with this thing. Now it's almost empty. <laughs> and I said, why not? Let's just take all the varnish off my gun and keep it, put it to its natural state. Um, I haven't put any uh, oil treatment on my stock yet, so it will get darker. Uh, I'll pro probably put some mineral oil or like Murphy's oil. I'll, I'll, I'll treat it with some kind of wood treatment uh, shortly because once the humidity comes this summer, I don't want water getting into it. So right now it's not too bad, but I will do it and maybe I'll do a video on treating it while, while showing you. I don't know. So this stuff takes the varnish off really well. Okay, here we go. Here it is. Don't laugh. I like the way the gun looks. Um, it looks more original. You guys can give your opinion. Uh, subscribe. Do whatever you want. So, and the Bruins are playing tonight, uh, which I don't have it on yet. I'll just, I don't have cable, so I'll probably just put it on the radio. Uh, I think 8 o'clock, I think they're on or something. Eastern time. I'm playing the Toronto Maple Leafs, just to let you know. So anyway, here we go. Don't laugh. Look at this little sucker. I think... Doesn't that look a lot better from my other videos? This is the natural state of my 303 right now. This is right down to the wood. And for me, <laughs> I think that looks a hell of a lot better from that stupid dark, dark varnish that's on there. It's, it's like the amber look. But now I got that nice vintage... You can see the rivets in here and everything. It's, it's just, uh, I'm missing that leather piece there, but it's all right, that filler. But I don't know, tell me what you think. Um, I kind of like the way it looks now. Um, it has more of a rustic feel to it. It's just natural wood from right when it was born. Um, so I don't know. I, I kind of like it. I kind of like this look a lot, a lot better. Um, you can tell me what you think about it, but it will get darker once I put some oil on it. In that finish, and it's like super smooth. And when I had that varnish on, it was kind of like not tacky, but it kind of had a feel where it's like eh, that's not vintage. I liked it before. Um, that's why I bought this gun, um, but I just like it even better now so maybe it's a blessing in disguise and I'll just put some oil on it just preserve it like some people do with their hot rods they do a preserve restoration um, they want to preserve that look you know when you have like a barn fine Corvette do you change all the parts or do you just do a resto preserve restoration basically I, I preserve restoration just make it work um so i don't know um but i did shoot this gun i shot three rounds um i hit my clay targets although i was only 30 feet 40 feet but um because i know i aimed dead center and it was dead center um but so this is gonna be a short video i'm not gonna Keep you guys too long but so this is what happened um and i'm glad it happened because i thought about stripping the varnish off here already and i just kept spraying and wiping it off with a towel like a regular bath towel or something like one of those towels that i use to clean i think i showed you on my videos and um this is it <laughs> Wow, this wood is some smooth before. Before it was just, you can feel the varnish. It was just, it was fine, but it showed all the nicks and dings and scratches. And like, this is like more, you know, uh, again, I've only paid this gun $200. Um, you know, so it's not perfect because you can see like where the rivets are and the little imperfections, but that's what makes this fun. This is what makes a sporter rise. You know, it's like, again, it's just not perfect here. But, man, I don't know, guys. 
I think I like it. I think I like this. I mean, I think it looks amazing now. It looks more at its natural state, and I will preserve it. Uh, okay, enough of that. <laughs> I'm like in love with this thing now because the way it looks. So I was shooting that bond arm in that video, and the the bugs video, um, and um, shooting that little bond arm. I like I said, that trigger's a little tricky. And you got to watch out for your thumb because you'll get a little cut because it that broke me open. The actual lever here it broke me open, it, it actually cut me because you got to make sure you hold this thing right. You got to make sure you're, you're over in your web because if you're over on your knuckle, it's going to break you open. And it broke me open that day. Um, I wasn't whining like it, like a little girl, but, uh, so, again, um, I know I've been, made, made three videos about this little thing so far, but, um, uh, again, just, just a little thing, don't put your knuckle over here, put it in your web, make sure you put it in your web, uh, obviously it's empty, so make sure you put it in your web, so if it does hit, it's just your web, not your knuckle. Because it, it broke me open. Like, I think the fourth shot in, it broke me open. So, uh, not to say, you know, I don't have tough skin, but, you know, it is a 45 ACP. And, um, and that's a month. Just, just a little FYI. Nothing major. Uh, again, it's just this little thing, and it, it, you need some hours into it. And a couple hundred rounds, 500 rounds or something. Maybe not 500, but you know what I mean. It's just you know, it's two two shots at a time, and uh, you know, practice with it. So yeah, so that's one little facts um, info on that. Um, that day I shot okay. I think uh, I was hitting my targets. Um, I missed on my 22. You guys saw that, which is okay because I was shooting my nine, 357. The point of aim is a little different. And usually I'm really right on with my 22 because it's a 22, right? So, um, so that's that. And um, but besides that, this little thing right here, be careful on your wood and your varnish. Um, it works great cleaning. It act. I think I said in my other video before. It acts like a brake clean. Anybody who's into auto mechanics know what a brake clean is. It's a uh, degreaser, but really rapid degreaser. And it's basically like, it really cleans metal really good. But it's really fast. It's not a penetrating, it's a quick penetrating. It's not a deep, like, oil penetrating like some cleaners do. Um, so that's what this is about. And it's a powder blast, obviously, and that's what it says. Uh, I'm not saying it's bad, it works great. But just, just to let you know, um, it doesn't say stay away from varnish or anything for your vintage rifles or your new rifles. So uh, I'm not going to use this again on, if, I'm not going to use this on my 4570, I'm not going to use this on my shotguns, uh, I'm not going to use anything on that. But maybe it's fine for those uh, rifles or shotguns because it's a, a, it's a hardened heat treated treatment. Um, it might work for that, um, but for this gun, it, it just ate it, and I said, I'm glad it was this gun, I'm glad it wasn't like a $1,500, uh, you know, some expensive 338Gs, a Lapua or something, you know, with a nice wood finish, or a Weatherby, or, you know, anything like that. But uh, anyway, guys, uh, 460 style here. Uh, just give it a little uh, 460 corner, basically. Uh, a little bit of information. Not much going on uh, right now. And I thought it'd be wise to uh, just pass that water around. That's just my experience with what just happened um, a week ago. And... That's where we're at. You guys stay safe. Bring some people out there. Shoot. Join your local gun clubs. Go shooting. 
uh, bring family, bring relatives, uh, teach people, teach co-workers, teach anybody, teach your neighbor. Um, and the Second Amendment is really important for this country. It's about our rights and it's about your rights and it's very important. We need to continue this trend and keep it at a high level because that's, that's, we, we deserve this. As Americans, we deserve uh, the rights to bear arms, you know, because we, we earned it. You pay taxes, we, you know, everybody pays taxes. Um, so, you know, we gotta keep the, the march going and the NRA and any gun club that you can join at, you know, at a, for what you can afford. Um, so, all right guys, 460 style, keep it safe, keep it real. Catch you later.